Welcome, everyone, to the November edition of Conversations with Archbishop Kurtz. Welcome, Archbishop. Uh, Brian, thank you. It's great to be in November. Made it to November. Getting close to Thanksgiving. That's right. That's right. Uh, we have a wonderful show ahead of us. We're going to have two guest speakers in this, in this uh, show today. We're going to have a wonderful visit from our first full-time archivist, Tim Tomes, will be coming on in a little while in segment two. And then after that, we're going to meet with Dr. Karen Shadle. Archbishop will talk to her in the area of worship. So thank you for being with us. But first, let's talk about what comes around this time of year, every year is November, is many different things. But one of the things it is, is Black Catholic History Month. And this year, we have lots of particular ways we're commemorating this month and celebrating this month. But So let's start with, Archbishop, what is this month about? Sure. Uh, in fact, Brian, I'm glad you said that because in preparation for this, I learned something new, and that was it was really in 1990 that the National Catholic, uh, the National Black Catholic Clergy Caucus, the, okay. the clergy who caucus throughout the United States, came up with this great idea of November, uh, which is, of course, begins with all saints right. and, and, of course, has St. Augustine uh, on November 13th and has St. Martin de Porres on November 3rd. And uh, it was a wonderful occasion for us to be able to highlight now uh, the presence of black Catholics, uh, both within our church and within the United States. So it's been now 30 years that we've had that, that uh, opportunity. Terrific. You know, um, uh, we have lots of history in our own diocese involving uh, black Catholics. Um, and, and so I thought it would be fun to talk about three particular characters or almost heroic figures for us. Um, one who is our, the first one I want to talk about is, is Mr. Daniel Rudd, yeah. who's a native of ours um, uh, and from Bardstown. And we are commemorating him particularly. But then we're going to talk about one of the first uh, priests in the United States, uh, Father Augustus Tolton, mm -hmm. and then a, a, a particular wonderful spiritual influence on many, many Catholics, African American and not, a Sister Thea Bowman. So these three people we're going to talk about. So let's start with Daniel Rudd. Yeah, let's let's do that, Brian. I, I meant to say something beforehand. It's never too late to go back. Uh, we'll talk about the recent, but just think about the Acts of the Apostles, the eighth chapter, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch that was uh, running after. Uh, the, the deacon Philip, yeah. uh, there's great roots. Sometimes people think, well, uh, w what is the, the rootedness of uh, black uh, Catholics, black families, uh, African American uh, families within the church? Well, it goes way, way, way back. Yeah. But Daniel Rudd is someone very local. Yeah. Uh, as you know, born in 1854, uh, born three years before the Dred Scott decision in which terribly uh, the Supreme Court ruled that a person who was black was not deemed to be worthy of being a citizen. It was a terrible rule and it was overruled uh, less than, than 10 years later with the Emancipation Proclamation and some amendments to the Constitution. But that's the atmosphere in which Daniel Rudd was born. As a slave, he was born in Bardstown, Kentucky, and indeed uh, went on through his own education to become uh, a rather substantial editor of a newspaper in, in Cincinnati, sure. Catholic newspaper, and, and this is a major thing, uh, ar around 1890 or so, uh, he was very instrumental with just a few others in beginning what's now called the National Catholic Black Congress, which meets I think every five years now, and is a major influence on life of the church in the United States. Very good. Now we're 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 honoring uh, him as kind of a native son this this yeah. month, and with a memorial at St. Joseph's. So just Cemetery. been blessed, and it's a wonderful it's a wonderful presence. It was a wonderful occasion at, at uh, St. Joseph's uh, Proto Cathedral, and of course, in the cemetery uh, of St. Joseph, where where he resides, he is buried along with his family members. It's a it's a wonderful plaque, and uh, tells the story and gives even a little more insight. So. I love the way Tim Tomes has, has helped us put together something that people, when they visit, will be in for a treat if they were not at the dedication. What, what did you learn as we started to discover about him? Because, you know, obviously he's rooted here, he's been buried here for a hundred years almost, and yet he's not someone we've often talked about. No, we're looking for heroes, and I, I would say what we discovered is he was a forgotten hero. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Father Terry Bradshaw said yeah. to me, uh, uh, you know, he says, I asked three or four of my parishioners, uh, how much do you know about Daniel Rudd? And they said, Daniel who? Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, so we all need to learn our history. Yeah. And, uh, and so it was especially appropriate sure. for us to lift up uh, his example as, as really a living hero. Right. Um, I think we're in an age where, where we need heroes. Yes. We desperately need that. And so uh, that was, that's been a big, great gift. Let's look at the other two. Uh, Father Augustus Tolton, uh, another, uh, this, this particular fellow has already had a, a cause for sainthood begun. Amazing. Uh, so tell I us think about he's venerable, him. if I'm yes. not mistaken. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, born in, in Missouri, uh, educated in, in Quincy, uh, Illinois, um, was not accepted. Uh, and, and by the way, he was born the same year that Daniel, Daniel Rudd, Rudd was born yeah. in, in 1854. Uh, wanted to become a priest, felt God was calling him to become a priest, was not accepted in any seminary. So he ended up being accepted in, in Rome, was ordained as the first African-American priest for the United States of right. America, right. Uh, served in Chicago. I think he was known as Father Gus. Um, sadly, he lived as a priest only 12 years, but he had such a great, great impact on the life of the people and the life of the church that as you well said, saintly and already has reached uh, that level in which we refer to him as venerable. Yeah. So uh, what a great gift. Uh, by the way, uh, Thea Bowman, Sister Thea Bowman, a third is someone whom you knew personally. So yeah. tell us a little bit about her. Yeah, this goes back a long ways. Uh, 1979, wow. the two of us were invited to, together to give a presentation at the National Catholic Youth Conference both of us were a little younger in those days, and of course, uh, she's now gone to God. Um, but anyway, we had this wonderful experience where we were working with a large group, maybe a thousand young people at a time, kind of a rally format. But what was m my best memory was as we concluded this session and the kids are screaming and singing and so forth, she broke into a, 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 kind, of a, a, a kind of a gospel message uh, song. Wow. Um, almost as if she made it up on the spot. It clearly came right from her heart. And I remember in that moment thinking, wow, this is one holy woman of God. Wow. It's long before many people knew her. It well, too, after that. it's very interesting. I know we're, we're near the end of this segment, but I gotta say that 10 years after that, the bishops heard her speak right before her death. I think they, they heard her speak in, in 89, mm -hmm. and I think she died in, in March of 1990, and still, 30 years later, talk about that. Yeah, what a great woman. Well, well these are three great figures. Uh, good way to celebrate uh, Black Catholic History Month. Thanks, Archbishop, and thanks, viewers. Stay tuned in a moment for our first guest who is going to join Archbishop in conversation.